Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. Hello, celestial seekers. I'm excited to have you all here today as we dive deep into the incredible story of Ezekiel, a man who was called by God in the most profound and unexpected way. Today, we begin our journey by witnessing Ezekiel's first encounter with the voice of the Almighty. Imagine being overwhelmed by a divine presence so powerful it knocks you to the ground, only to hear those words, stand up and listen. At this point in Ezekiel's life, everything changes. He isn't just a priest anymore, he's being called to be a prophet, one who will speak on behalf of God to a people living in exile. These exiles, the people of Judah, had already experienced the trauma of losing their homes, their city, and most importantly, the temple, the center of their worship and identity. They were scattered, defeated, and without hope. And it's into this moment of despair that God calls Ezekiel to rise and speak. How would you feel in his position? A man who has to tell people what they least want to hear, that Jerusalem, their beloved city, will be completely destroyed. That hope is not just around the corner, but something far in the distance. Can you imagine the weight of carrying such a message, knowing that many would reject it or even turn against you? But Ezekiel's story isn't just about judgment. Even in this dark moment, God is preparing Ezekiel to carry not only words of destruction but also promises of restoration. Stay with us as we walk alongside Ezekiel in his journey, where visions and divine commands will shape the destiny of a nation. Feel free to share your thoughts as we go along. What would you do if God called you to deliver such heavy news? Let's talk in the chat, and don't forget to explore our other videos to learn more about the incredible stories that make up the Bible's rich history. The Role of a Watchman When God called Ezekiel to be a prophet, he didn't just give him a message, he gave him a responsibility. Ezekiel was appointed as a watchman for the people of Israel. But what exactly does that mean? In ancient times, a watchman's job was to stand on the city walls and look out for danger. If an enemy approached, the watchman would sound the alarm, giving people time to prepare or flee. The watchman's role was critical for the safety of the entire community. For Ezekiel, this role wasn't just about physical danger. He was watching over the spiritual well-being of his people. His job was to warn them about their sinful ways and the consequences that would follow if they didn't turn back to God. God made it clear to Ezekiel that if he saw danger coming and didn't warn the people, their destruction would be on his hands. But if he warned them and they didn't listen, they would face the consequences, and Ezekiel would be free from guilt. Can you imagine the pressure of this responsibility? Ezekiel wasn't just warning strangers, he was warning people he knew, people who had already suffered so much in exile. The thought of telling them that more destruction was on the way must have been terrifying. But God's message was urgent, and Ezekiel had no choice but to obey. Ezekiel's task was made even more difficult by the fact that the people didn't want to hear his warnings. Many of them still believed that Jerusalem would be spared, that their exile would be short-lived, and that everything would go back to normal. They were in denial about their situation, and Ezekiel's message shattered their false hope. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? What would you do in Ezekiel's place? How do you tell people something they desperately don't want to hear, especially when their future depends on it? Let's think about this together. Are there situations in our own lives where we need to be like a watchman, warning ourselves or others before it's too late? Drop your thoughts in the chat. I'd love to hear your take on what it means to carry such a heavy responsibility. And while you're here, check out the other videos where we explore the lives of other prophets who, like Ezekiel, had to deliver tough messages. Symbolic Acts and Strange Commands Ezekiel wasn't just a prophet who delivered messages through words. God often asked him to perform symbolic actions, dramatic and sometimes strange acts that would visually show the people what was about to happen to them. These acts were designed to grab attention, making sure that Ezekiel's warnings were not just heard, but seen and felt by everyone around him. One of the most striking things God told Ezekiel to do was to create a small model of Jerusalem under siege. He used clay bricks to represent the city and placed an iron pan between himself and the model to symbolize the separation between God and his people due to their sin. Ezekiel then acted out a mock siege, symbolizing the attack that would soon come to Jerusalem. This wasn't just a quiet performance, this was done in front of the people, in public view, to make sure they understood the severity of what was coming. But that wasn't all. God also commanded Ezekiel to lie on his side for a long period, 390 days on his left to symbolize the years of Israel's sin and 40 days on his right for Judah's sins. Imagine seeing a grown man lying in public for over a year, barely moving, day after day. It was a powerful, visible reminder of the long history of sin that had led to the exile. It wasn't just a prophecy, it was a living symbol of their disobedience. And then came another strange command, Ezekiel had to shave his head and beard, which was a significant act in those times, symbolizing mourning and shame. He divided the hair into three parts, 
one part he burned, another part he struck with a sword, and the last part he scattered to the wind. Each portion represented what would happen to the people of Jerusalem, some would die by fire, some by the sword, and others would be scattered among the nations. These acts were shocking, and that was the point. Words weren't enough to shake the people out of their complacency, so God used these dramatic visuals to warn them of what was coming. Yet, despite these bold actions, many people still refused to believe. They were living in exile but held on to the hope that Jerusalem would be spared and that they would soon return. Ezekiel's acts, however, told a very different story, one of destruction and scattering. Have you ever seen someone do something so unexpected that it forced you to stop and think? Ezekiel's actions were meant to create that moment for his people. Are there times in our own lives when we overlook warnings because we're too caught up in our own hopes and plans? I'd love to hear what you think. Share your thoughts in the comments, and let's discuss how these ancient actions can still speak to us today. And while you're here, don't forget to check out our other videos for more insights into the incredible stories of the Bible. The Valley of Dry Bones One of the most powerful and memorable visions Ezekiel received was the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. In this vision, Ezekiel is taken by the Spirit of the Lord to a vast valley, and as he looks around, he sees that the valley is filled with dry, lifeless bones scattered everywhere. These bones weren't just recently dead, they were old, brittle, and completely dried out, representing the hopeless state of the people of Israel. God then asks Ezekiel a simple but profound question, Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel, knowing the power of God, replies, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Ezekiel understood that in human terms, these bones had no hope of life. But with God, nothing is impossible. What follows is one of the most miraculous and symbolic moments in the Bible. God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, and as he does, something incredible happens, the bones begin to rattle and come together. Bone attaches to bone, and soon tendons and flesh appear on them, covering the bones. But even then, they were still lifeless until God commanded Ezekiel to call the breath into them. When Ezekiel speaks, the breath of life enters the bodies, and they stand up, alive, a vast army of restored people. This vision is filled with symbolism. The dry bones represent the people of Israel who were spiritually dead, broken, and scattered. They had lost their homeland, their temple, and their sense of identity during the exile. Many of them felt completely abandoned by God, believing that they were beyond hope or restoration. But through this vision, God was telling Ezekiel, and the people, that no matter how hopeless things seemed, he had the power to bring life where there was death, hope where there was despair. The act of the bones coming together and receiving breath is a symbol of the spiritual revival God was promising for his people. It wasn't just about returning to their land, but about their hearts and spirits being restored. God was showing them that he could renew them, not just physically but also spiritually. Even when everything seemed lost, he had the power to rebuild, to revive, and to bring new life. This vision of dry bones coming to life has deep meaning for all of us. It speaks to those moments in our own lives when we feel spiritually dry or distant from God, when our circumstances seem lifeless and without hope. Just as God breathed life into those dry bones, He can breathe new life into us as well, no matter how far we feel from Him. Have you ever experienced a time when things seemed beyond repair, yet hope came in an unexpected way? What areas in your life feel like dry bones right now? Could they be waiting for God's breath of life to bring them back to full strength? Let's talk about it in the comments. And while you're thinking about it, don't forget to check out our other videos for more stories like this one that inspire and challenge our understanding of God's power. The Battle of Gog and Magog Ezekiel's prophecies aren't only about the present state of Israel during his time, but also about future events. One of the most intriguing and mysterious prophecies Ezekiel delivers is about a great battle between the forces of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, Ezekiel sees a future where Israel is living in peace and security. It's a time when the people have returned to their land and are no longer threatened by surrounding nations. But suddenly, out of nowhere, a powerful enemy rises, Gog, from the land of Magog, along with a massive coalition of other nations. This coalition, led by Gog, sets out to invade Israel, planning to plunder and destroy the peaceful nation. They gather their forces and come against Israel in an overwhelming show of strength. The army is vast, so large that it's described as covering the land like a cloud. It's a moment of crisis, where it seems like Israel has no chance of survival. Yet, as terrifying as this invasion appears, the outcome is already determined. God steps in with divine power and delivers his people in a way that is nothing short of miraculous. God's response to Gog and his armies is swift and decisive. He sends earthquakes, rainstorms, hailstones, fire, and sulfur to devastate the invading forces. It's not the strength of Israel's military or its defenses that save them, it's God himself who fights on their behalf. The enemies are utterly defeated, 
and their bodies are left scattered across the land. The people of Israel don't even have to engage in the battle, God takes care of it completely. The aftermath of the battle is so overwhelming that it takes the people of Israel seven months just to bury the bodies of the invaders. The prophecy of Gog and Magog isn't just about one battle, it carries deeper spiritual meaning. It represents the ultimate struggle between good and evil, where evil forces rise up to challenge God's plans, but they are ultimately defeated by His power. It shows that no matter how great the threat, God is in control and will protect His people. This prophecy points to the fact that God's promises to Israel, and to His people, are unbreakable. He will defend them even when the situation seems impossible. There's a lot of debate about when this battle will take place. Some people believe it already happened in ancient history, while others think it's a prophecy about events still to come, perhaps at the end of time. The vision of Gog and Magog is also mentioned in the book of Revelation, which has led many to see it as part of a future apocalyptic event. While the exact timing may be uncertain, the message is clear, God's sovereignty and protection are sure, and no enemy can stand against him in the end. This prophecy invites us to reflect on the battles we face in our own lives. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed, like there's no way out, like the odds are stacked against us. But Ezekiel's vision reminds us that, just as God fought for Israel, he fights for us too. Even in the most hopeless situations, God is at work behind the scenes, ensuring that his plans for us are not thwarted. Have you ever faced a situation where it seemed like you were up against something far too big to handle on your own? How did you see God work in that situation? Or maybe you're in a battle right now, what does this prophecy tell you about how to trust God in the midst of it? Let's talk about it in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about other incredible prophecies in the Bible, check out the other videos on our channel. There's always more to discover. The New Temple and the River of Life One of Ezekiel's final and most extraordinary visions is of a new temple, a place of true worship and restoration for the people of Israel. In this vision, God shows Ezekiel a grand and detailed temple, much larger and more magnificent than the one that had been destroyed in Jerusalem. The measurements and descriptions are so precise that it feels almost like Ezekiel is being taken on a tour of this sacred place. But the vision is not just about the physical building itself, it symbolizes the restoration of Israel, a return to proper worship, and the renewal of their relationship with God. The temple Ezekiel sees isn't just a replacement for the old one, it represents something much bigger. This new temple is a picture of God's presence returning to his people. After years of exile and separation, God is showing them that he has not abandoned them. The temple in this vision becomes a sign of hope and renewal, a reminder that God will once again dwell among his people, and they will be restored not just physically, but spiritually as well. One of the most fascinating parts of this vision is the river of life that flows from the temple. Ezekiel sees a small trickle of water flowing from beneath the temple's threshold. As the water moves outward, it grows deeper and wider, eventually becoming a mighty river. Wherever this river flows, it brings life. Trees grow along its banks, producing fruit every month, and the water even brings healing to the Dead Sea, turning its salty, lifeless waters into fresh, life-sustaining waters full of fish. This river represents the life-giving power of God's presence. It symbolizes the healing and restoration that God brings to his people and the land. Just as the water flows from the temple and brings life to everything it touches, God's spirit flows out and brings renewal to his people and the world around them. It's a picture of God's blessing and abundance, showing that when he is at the center, life flourishes. The vision of the new temple and the river of life also points to the future. Many see it as a symbol of the ultimate restoration that will take place when God's kingdom is fully established. It's a vision of peace, abundance, and perfect worship, where God's presence fills the earth and everything is made whole again. The imagery of the river is echoed in the book of Revelation, where a similar river of life flows from God's throne in the new Jerusalem, signaling the final restoration of all things. This vision encourages us to think about what it means to have God's presence in our lives. The temple represents worship and connection with God, and the river represents the life and healing that come from Him. Are there areas in your life where you need God's healing and restoration? What would it look like for you to experience His life-giving presence flowing through you? Let's talk about it in the comments. And if you're curious about more incredible visions and prophecies in the Bible, make sure to explore our other videos. There's so much more to uncover, 